So look, I believe there are people in this room, you've heard about Jesus, but you don't know the love of Christ. There's so many insecurities being rejected from childhood. Look, I know because I have been wrestling with this. I look at, I'm just full confession here. I'm reading this passage going, God, I don't know. I don't know if I know the love of Christ the way Paul did. My mom died giving birth to me. So my dad sent me off to Hong Kong. I, I, he didn't want, I, I killed his wife. My birth killed his wife. Sent me off to be with my grandparents in Hong Kong, and then he remarried, and so then I come back in the States when I'm six, probably because my grandma won't watch me anymore. It's getting too old. So my dad has to take me. My brother and sister have had their own life without me, my older brother and sister. I didn't even speak English. Coming over as like a five-year-old kid, and they didn't want me. Dad didn't want me. My stepmom, maybe, but then she died in a car accident two, two years later. And my dad, is just, he just treated me different from all the other kids, and, and I understand now. And so when he died when I was 12, after all the beatings and just rejection, we never had a single, we never talked once. He never even says, hey, how do you like that sandwich? Nothing, nothing, nothing. The only time he spoke is when he would tell me to do something or beat me. I remember him tying me to a tree, grabbing all the branches and just going at it until a branch would break. He'd grab another one, and I am screaming at the top of my lungs. He just leaves me tied to a tree. It's getting dark. I don't know if I need to go in. So when he died when I was 12, I'm kind of sad. I'm kind of not. So you spend your life going, no one. Growing up, no one cared if I was dead or alive. In fact, they, they prefer death. We don't want him here. Now you're supposed to, now you're, now you're telling me the God of the universe. chose me in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined me to be adopted as his son in Christ Jesus. You can write that on a piece of paper. You can make me memorize it. But that doesn't mean that I know. I know it. Where you know you're loved. I've been in ministry for about almost 40 years. I'm going, God, there's still some insecurity in me. I see it. There's still like shame. There's still embarrassment over things I did 40 years ago. What in the world, Lord? I want to know this love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. I want to know it all. See, some of us that have been rejected and we, don't, we, we just grew up not knowing unconditional love. It takes the word of God. It takes, it takes the Holy Spirit. It takes people getting on their knees, begging that according to the riches of his glory, he would strengthen a kid like me with power through his spirit at the very center of whoever I am so that Christ may dwell in my heart through faith. I think there's a lot of people in this room that know what I'm talking about. That you know you were taught this stuff. You intellectually would get it right on a test. Does Jesus love you? True or false? True. But to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge I'm praying for a miracle tonight. This is our only hope that somehow God, according to the riches of his glory, he just decides in heaven. 
I'm going to grant it to them. I'm just going to give them so much grace. I'm going to give them so much strength. In their inner being, it's no longer an external thing where you try not to sin, but something changes inside. And it's not earning and, and, and trying to do something to prove something. It's just, he did it. According to the riches of his glory, he just strengthened me. In, inside of me. And now suddenly I know that I'm loved by Jesus, the creator. And now all I want to do is serve him and tell people about what Jesus did in my life because I now know the love of Christ.